Today, we're setting up N8N on our Raspberry Pi. N8N is an incredible tool that lets you schedule automations through a drag and drop interface. It's now my favorite way to automate things, so I'm gonna show you how to set it up on this device. We're going to do this using the Docker Compose method, which I'll run you through. I've opted for the most simple pathway forward that doesn't require you to pay money for an external domain, open up ports to your home network or anything like that. Because I opted for simplicity where things just work locally and you can't access it from the internet, the trade-offs are authenticating into Google products may not work. And if you're looking to trigger anything via webhooks into your Raspberry Pi N8N instance, that also won't work. But everything else should. Let's jump into it. I'm going to fire up Tiger VNC, which is how I remote into my Raspberry Pi. Once you're logged in, you want to open up File Explorer. Go ahead and create a new folder called N8N. Go ahead and create another folder called Local Files. And finally, you want to right click and go New File and create a new Docker Compose.yaml file. In this file, we're going to specify exactly what we want to happen. Now, if you don't have Docker or Docker Compose already set up on your Raspberry Pi, go ahead and follow this video. It's like three minutes long, takes you through the entire setup. If you've already got that set up, this is what you want to put in that Docker Compose file. Now, I'll also leave a GitHub link down below so you can just copy and paste the entire contents. You won't have to type it out. Okay, let's describe what's happening. We're pulling the latest N8N image from Docker. We're saying we want you to always restart the container unless we specify that we want it stopped. This is the default port that it operates on. There are some important environment variables that we're going to set. The first one is N8N secure cookie equals false. If you don't set this, you're going to get an angry error message whenever you try to access your N8N instance when you're not directly on the Raspberry Pi. So if you're trying to access it from a laptop or a PC on your home network, it won't work with this setup unless you set this flag. If you're looking for a more secure productionized setup, you are going to have to do the full blown setup, which includes purchasing a domain name and setting up a reverse proxy, but we're not going to do that. The next important bit is your time zone. So set this for your particular area. I've set it to Melbourne, Australia. This is important for when you schedule your events that it has the right time zone set. And then we've got a couple of volumes. So the first two are kind of like the default ones that it wants. This is an optional line. I wanted to give N8N access to my external hard drive, which is currently mounted to this far path. This is optional, but very important because if you wanted to do any work with your external hard drive, maybe you've got a home media server setup, by adding this line in, you'll allow N8N to be able to interact with it, which means you can do automations around shuffling your files around, pulling data from websites and adding it into metadata. It just opens up a world of possibilities. So that's our Docker Compose file explained. I'm gonna close out of that. We're going to open up a terminal window cd into our n8n folder that we just created and we're going to run docker compose up minus d this is going to spin up the container for us the very first time you run this command it will take a couple of minutes once that's done i'm going to minimize out of our raspberry pi go ahead and open up a web browser and you want to go to your Raspberry Pi. For me, that is home.local, the two dots, and it's on port 5678. If you're not sure what your DNS name is, you can get the IP address directly from your Raspberry Pi if you type in hostname-i. This first one here, go ahead and copy that. You can also do that followed by the port number. Go ahead and set your account up. So I'm going to type in an email address. Go ahead and click get started. And I'm just going to skip over that. We now have N8N up and running on our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to quickly show you some basics. 
If we want to create our very first workflow, we can click this start from scratch button or that one up in the top right hand corner. We're going to click add our first step. There's a bunch of ways you can trigger workflows. You can do them manually, on a schedule, and a bunch of various ways. I'm going to go manual for now. So when we do that, we want to do something. Now there's a bunch you can do. You can trigger all of these different things. You can hook into AWS, you can hook into Google Cloud. You can interact with AI. So if you have Gemini or maybe Olama running locally, there's some really cool use cases you can do. And we're going to dive into those into future videos. I'm just going to show you a basic hello world execution. So if we type command, we're going to execute a command and we're going to say hello world. We'll click execute step. We can see it's outputted hello world there. So I'm going to go back to canvas. That's it in a nutshell. Now, if you want something more complex in this video, I show you how you can automatically pay yourself whenever you tick things off of your to-do list, which is pretty cool. And if you're looking for some more ideas on workflows to create, there's actually an entire website set up where you can just copy and import workflows. So if you head over to N8N workflows, this is the one you want. We're going to go browse all integrations. And as you can see, there's over a thousand different types. I'm just going to pick one from the list. So we'll go open AI. It'll then show you all of the different kind of automations you can just import. This one seems interesting to me. Compose reply draft messages in Gmail using OpenAI. You get to see exactly what it does with some instructions down below. And if we click use for free, we can copy that JSON template. And if we head over to N8N, it right, looks like I might need to import it from a file. So I'm going to just quickly go into my downloads folder, nano example.json. I'm going to paste the JSON contents in there. Save the file. And I'm going to import from my downloads. That's how you can find and import already built automations for you within your N8N instance. Final thing, make sure you hit the big orange save icon. When I've been mucking around with this, I've found sometimes it automatically saves and other times it doesn't. I've quite literally spent hours working on workflows to not have it save and lose everything. It's very frustrating when that happens, so make sure you hit that big save icon. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And if there are any particular automations or ideas you guys would like me to check out, also let me know because I love experimenting with this piece of software. As always, Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.